So if the 2016 Democratic Party primary wasn't eye-opening to you, then 2020 should confirm beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Democratic Party has absolutely no principles. They stand for nothing and represent no one. They are vapid, they are hollow, and they are not to be taken seriously. And the only utility that they have for us on the left is that they have the infrastructure for us to take over and kick them all out. Because, I mean, look at this. In a second, they flipped and they're supporting someone who is a racist, serial sexual harasser who's an oligarch that effectively bought his way to second place after for years now browbeating Bernie Sanders supporters in the left for supposedly not being woke enough, saying that we don't actually care about communities of color and this left movement is just too white. Well, now they're supporting the worst possible person if they truly claim to care about communities of color, marginalized people, identities. Identity politics, for lack of a better word. And on top of that, after screeching at the top of their lungs how we can't support Bernie Sanders because he's not a real Democrat, look how quickly they fall in line to support a Republican. So the Democratic Party is an absolute joke, and Mike Bloomberg's rise reveals that to you. It reveals how craven and morally bankrupt they are as a party. Because they're supporting Mike Bloomberg not necessarily because they believe what he's saying politically, but because... He has money. And the Democratic Party, generally speaking, they don't care about policy so much as they care about maintaining their seat, maintaining their position of power. That's all that this is about. And if he's got the money, then they're going to be there for him, regardless of what they said, you know, about uh, voting Democrat and uh, supporting the woke candidates. It, it's just, it honestly is embarrassing. And the reason why Mike Bloomberg is so powerful, so persuasive, and the reason why Democrats are basically now being openly hypocritical is because the amount of money he's spending, it truly can never be overstated. He has already, at this point in time, remember, we're just in February, two contests have taken place. He's already outspent Obama's 2012 general election campaign spending. I'll repeat that. He has spent more already than Obama spent on his entire re-election campaign at $338 million, and he is open to spending a billion on this election. And, you know, aside from all of the millions of dollars on television advertisements that he's buying, that money is, you know, it's not just getting his name out there. It's clearly influencing networks to cover him more generously or at a minimum, to ignore his scandals, he's donated to the DNC, he's donated to state Democratic parties, elected officials at local levels, hence why so many mayors are endorsing him. This individual bought the Democratic Party. I don't know how else to describe it. He bought an entire political party. That is where we're at in American politics. We are in the latest stage of capitalism, where you can become so rich that you can buy a political party. Think about that for a minute. Think about the implications that this has on democracy. If he proves that this strategy is successful, can you imagine what to expect in 2024, 2028? We're just going to take turns with an oligarch running for president, Jeff Bezos, the Walton family, Mark Zuckerberg. And it doesn't really matter what their record is or, you know, what they represent, what their ideological leanings are, if they even have that, because they can just overwhelm people with advertisements and they construct this alternate reality where we're thinking that Mike Bloomberg is actually a candidate who stands up for racial justice and not actually knowing that he's that racist asshole who implemented stop and frisk and claimed that, you know, black and brown people don't know how to behave in the workplace. I mean, it's truly just the biggest possible threat to democracy. And if he's able to successfully buy his way to the nomination, or at least, you know, remain in until the convention, that in and of itself is so, it's just, I can't even describe it. I don't think I can, with a straight face, say that we live in a democracy. Even now, you can argue that we're in an all-out oligarchy. But I mean, if he actually is successful with this strategy, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It's it's horrifying. But here's what we need to do. We need to be very clear about the threat that he poses to democracy. And we need to take notes right now. Be very, you know, scrupulous in what you do. And acknowledge that there's a lot of people, a lot of sellouts in the Democratic Party 
who are choosing to support Mike Bloomberg, not because they believe in what he represents. He represents nothing but oligarchy. And anyone who is choosing to, you know, not just refuse to speak out, but actually go so far as to endorse Mike Bloomberg, they absolutely must never be able to win another election again. Because if you're sitting by and you're quiet as somebody buys an entire Democratic Party, that in and of itself shows that you have no political courage or moral courage. But if you go so far as to endorse what he's doing, there is no place even in the Democratic Party for you. And I know that they like to say that this party is, you know, a Big Ten party, that it's so big that even we can include Republican billionaires who are racist in it. No, in actuality, the left isn't going to stand for that. And if he is the nominee, we have to make it very clear that we're not voting for him. The Democratic Party needs to know that we will not tolerate this, because if we tolerate this in this election cycle, we're going to have to tolerate the next billionaire oligarch in the following election cycle. And let's all remember, Donald Trump self-financed a lot of his campaign in the Republican primary in 2016. So Trump already kind of proved that it's successful. But Mike Bloomberg is showing what happens when, you know, you put that strategy on steroids. So anyone who isn't speaking up, note their silence because it's deafening. And people who are actually endorsing Mike Bloomberg... They are a special kind of evil enablers, and they absolutely must be primaried. So I want to go to this list that was put together by a Twitter user who lists all of the endorsers in Congress of Mike Bloomberg, and if they have a primary challenger, who that individual is. So the first is Max Rose, who represents New York's 11th Congressional District. We have Stephanie Murray from Florida's 7th. We have Harley Ruda from California's 48th. We have Bobby Rush from Illinois' 1st. And he actually does have multiple primary challengers, but I actually brought on Robert Emmons on the program. He's a phenomenal candidate. He's been endorsed by Our Revolution. He is a true progressive. So if you are in that 1st Congressional District, you have to support him. You can't allow someone who endorsed Mike Bloomberg to remain in power because they're showing they don't care about democracy. We've got Scott Peters of California's 52nd. He does have a primary opponent. Her name is Nancy Cassidy. We have Ben McAdams, who is representing Utah's 4th. His primary opponent is Daniel Beckstrand. We have Juan Vargas representing California's 51st. We have Mikey Sherrill, who's representing New Jersey's 11th. And he has Mark Washburn as a primary opponent. We have Haley Stevens representing Michigan's 11th Congressional District. We have Lucy McBeth representing Georgia's 6th Congressional District. We have Stacey Plaskett, at-large representative for the Virgin Islands. We have Gregory Meeks representing New York's 5th Congressional District. And just a little side note about Gregory Meeks. He claimed that we can't possibly support Bernie Sanders because he's not a Democrat. He literally endorsed the Republican Mike Bloomberg. Isn't that amazing? Mike Bloomberg, I think he was an independent up until 2018, and then he finally registered as a Democrat. So that's all it takes. I'm sure that if Bernie Sanders actually registered as a Democrat, even though he's running in the primary, but if he registered as a Democrat, then they'd all change their minds, right? <laughs> now, Gregory Meeks does have a primary challenger, Shaniyat Chowdhury. Support this individual, donate to them. I mean, this cannot be tolerated. We have Ted Deutsch representing Florida's 22nd Congressional District. Also has a primary opponent, Imtiaz Ahmad Mohammed. Every single one of these people who are endorsing Mike Bloomberg, they are basically greenlighting the death of our democracy. They're communicating to you that they absolutely could not care less about the United States devolving into full-blown oligarchy. And I use the word devolving into full-blown, you know, oligarchy a little bit loosely here because you can even argue that we're already a full-blown oligarchy if you're judging that based on policy outcomes because we already know that's dictated by what elites want. So, I mean, if you truly want to cement our status as a plutocracy or an oligarchy, Mike Bloomberg successful do that and these people are complicit. They're saying, you know what? I support what he's doing. I think it's perfectly reasonable for an oligarch to be able to buy his way to the nomination, buy an entire fucking Democratic Party in the largest, you know, most prosperous country in the world. I believe someone can be so rich that they literally can buy one of two major political parties. How insane is that? So we've got, you know, the remaining Koch brother 
who has purchased the Republican Party, and we have this oligarch, Mike Bloomberg, who has purchased the Democratic Party. Why not just, like, give them the keys already? Like, what's the point of us even voting? That's how bad the situation is becoming. This is the latest stage of capitalism before the system just collapses in on itself because this is not a tenable situation. Like, this can't go on. You can't try to prop up this system that's wholly illegitimate anymore. So all of these people, they've got to be out of politics. Everything that they say going forward should not be taken seriously because they're proving that they just care about their own careers. And I'm sure that Mike Bloomberg gave them money. Either way, these people have to go. They cannot be trusted. They must be primaried. Any, anyone who supports Mike Bloomberg is the enemy. And the reason why we say that is because if you can just sit idly by while someone buys our democracy then just admit that you don't care about democracy. Just admit that you're cool with oligarchy and authoritarianism at worst. I mean, this is an individual who changed the laws in New York to give himself a third term. This is what liberals are screaming about Trump possibly doing. Crying about, oh, what if he doesn't leave office if he loses in 2020? You have someone who is as bad as Donald Trump, if not worse in many ways, because he's more competent than Donald Trump. So who knows the damage that he can do? And if he takes over the Democratic Party, then, I mean, we just have two far-right parties? Is that where we're at? I mean, there's got to be some point where we say, no, we're not going to do this. We're not going to vote blue no matter who. We will never support Mike Bloomberg. I don't give a shit who he's running against. He can run against the devil. We're not going to give in to this. We're not going to legitimize this illegitimate process where he fucking bought his way to the primary. So anyone who supports that, long story short, they're part of the problem and they've got to go. They should never be able to find a job in politics again. All of these people must be primaried. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.